Hi, I'm Patrick Fulop with our amazing instructor, Jacob Yap. This is Effective Martial Arts, and in this lesson, guillotine defense. The four layers, prevention, escapes, counter, and survival. All right, so if you missed our guillotine choke video, check it out right now, because you definitely need to understand the mechanics of how to set up and finish the guillotine from different positions before you study defense. And you also need a partner who's able to apply it correctly so you can practice realistically. So quick overview first. The first layer of uh, guillotine defense is prevention. If I can maintain my posture and my head is aiming in the same direction as his, it's gonna be very hard for him to wrap up a guillotine choke. Even if I'm very close and my head is aligned with his spine, he's gotta reach far to reach for the guillotine choke. So prevention, whatever our relative position, is to have my head aligned with his. If my head is down and my spine perpendicular to his, it's gonna be easy for him to get it. Number two is gonna be escape, so you have two options for this. You can either blast through, so correct your posture reactively, and then possibly go to the back or finish double leg, and different things you can do from there. Or you wanna retreat and fight the grip and just get out from here. Number three is gonna be your basic counter, which is gonna be to pass the guard. Whether you start from standing or on the ground, get around and get past his guard in order for you to get the side control. From here, you have the possible von flu counter choke that is possible if the person does not let go of your head. And your last layer of defense is gonna be survival. So grip fighting, trying to make a strong neck and try to relieve the pressure uh, long enough for you to be able to proceed to any other one, so pass the guard or escape different ways so you can get three of the guillotine chokes. So sometimes you're stuck there, you just gotta survive long enough to be able to counter or escape. All right, so defensive layer number one, posture. So let's look at it. The most common uh, entry for a guillotine choke uh, for the person attacking is gonna be when you shoot in for a takedown, double leg or single leg. So if I go in here and my posture is down, it's very easy for him to wrap up my neck and then proceed to his guillotine finish. Guillotine finish. <laughs> no good. Okay, so, but if I shoot in and I have proper posture, my head is looking up here, I have a strong neck. I'm in a good position here to finish my double leg takedown and it makes it a lot harder for him. See the contortion on his shoulder, it's gonna be hard for him to wrap up a decent guillotine choke. I have much more chances of finishing my takedown. Another uh, common entry is from uh, top half guard in this case. So same thing, if my head is far away, my spine is in line for, with his, it's gonna be hard for him to reach my head. If I bring my head perpendicular to his, it can very easily wrap it up and then he can process to uh, full mount, possibly finish in half guard. So again, prevention, as long as my head is not perpendicular to his spine, I'm gonna be safe and it's gonna be hard for him to reach for the guillotine choke. So layer number two is to escape. So uh, we saw in the guillotine choke video, what he's trying to do is to keep my posture broken in order for him to finish the choke. So let's say starting in the standing variation, if he's here, if he can apply downwards pressure with his shoulder and break my posture, he's gonna have a good chance of finishing. So go ahead. Okay, so if I can re-establish my posture from here, I just get my hips under and make a strong neck from the standing position. I'm gonna make it very hard for him to finish the choke. From here, I can finish the double leg. We're gonna see that in a moment. Or sometimes I can get around, I break the grip, and get to the back body lock situation here, where I can do a takedown, I can climb to the back, I can do different things. So that's your first option, blasting through, re-establishing your uh, posture, so reactive posture. Second option, if uh, I can't get my head up, it's too heavy on my head and I try as I may, I can't get it, I might want to grip fight here and possibly break his grip and then slide straight out. That's a very good escape as well. So that could happen different ways. If he hasn't connected his hands together, I can control his hands, possibly connect one, two on one, and there's no chance he can connect here and then I can escape like this. I can progress to different counters from there. If the hands are connected already, I could sometimes dig my fingers in like this, dig my other arm inside as well and break the grip sometimes and escape from there. And if I can't break the grip, I can sometimes as well loosen it up, so I'll loosen the pressure on the neck. He's still heavy on my head so I can't posture out. But what I can do here, I can pull the elbow across, retreat a little bit and slide my head out this way. Once again from the other side, so I'm gonna be controlling the elbow like this. I could also control with this one over here. So I bring my head down and I pull it out. Now I come out on his chest like this. Now, if he uh, knows what he's doing, uh, as I go out from one side, he's gonna catch me on the other side. So if I'm here, 
and I start slipping out like this, you might catch me with the other hand, there we go, and I can keep, we keep going back and forth like this. So what I want to do here, ideally is settle in the middle and keep on grip fighting so I can escape straight out like this. There's still a choke you can do from here. We saw it in the guillotine choke video, the 10 finger guillotine. So if you want to pinch his elbows together, connect and then compress my trachea like this, but it's not as high percentage because there's not as much control here and it's relatively easy to grip fight, turn your head and get out. Those grip fighting mechanics are gonna be the same thing if you're in a turtle, if like the guy sprawls, sprawls on you and you're bottom turtle, same thing, you're gonna be fighting the grips here, trying to disconnect the hands, trying to escape the head. If you get caught in the top guard position, uh, you can also sometimes slip your head out, especially if the guy is flat on his back. So he's gonna to wanna to have his hips escaped on the side like this to have proper finishing mechanics. But if you can flatten him out, it kind of loosens and then you can make a strong neck, pull on this grip here, sometimes you can slip your head out to escape. This is also true from bottom mount. If you can manage to get this hand here and loosen the choke over here, possibly get the other hand here inside the elbow. Sometimes you can free your head here and make a strong neck. And if you can disconnect this hands, that's good. Then you can progress to escaping the position. And then you're back on top, you escape from the submission. Now guillotine defense layer number three is gonna to be to counter. And that counter is pretty much always the same. It's gonna to be to pass the guard in order to get the side control. Now only do this if you wanna grapple with the guy, you wanna to go to the ground. Sometimes it's better just to escape and disengage depending on what the situation may be. But it's gonna be uh, similar. So standing, if my goal was originally to take him down, I can pursue my double leg takedown. So I go here, even if uh, he uh, breaks my posture, here I can possibly control the legs like this, try to reestablish my posture, get my hips under, and I can possibly finish the double leg takedown this way, and then wind up in side control. Very important to pass the guard when you're doing the double leg takedown, so you can secure a top dominant side control position. Another way to do a takedown and pass the guard is when he's trying to finish standing, he's gonna have to bring his hips forward, which will compromise his base. So if I can lighten the load here by getting my fingers inside and lightening the choke here, I can possibly uh, wrap up the top of the shoulder like this with my other arm, and then I can go ahead and wrap the leg like this with my other leg, and this can give me a takedown. I just force it forward, it's kind of a trip, and I land past the guard in side control. And that can be done different ways. I can also use my hand over here to grab the outside of his neck, walk around here, and pinch his knees together to land in side control. So there's many different ways uh, to get past the guard as you take him down. If you get caught in close guard and the guy does the guillotine choke from there, well, your order of business is gonna be the same. Uh, if you wanna stay on the ground, it's gonna be to pass the guard and get to side control. So he breaks your posture, he starts escaping his hips, he climbs up higher here. Before he locks his guard, ideally, if the feet are open, I'm gonna push it away and hop past his guard to land in side control. Now that might prove difficult if his guard is high and locked uh, tight with his ankles together. So here you want a tripod, lighten the load here by uh, buying yourself a little bit of time. And here you might wanna shake. Shake, shake, shake until you lower the guard and then you can get past to side control. If he's in the uh, modified guard or half guard kind of variation and he doesn't have a super high bite with the leg, you might be able to roll forward. So again, by controlling here, you might be able to roll away here and get to your back like this. Now, this is one option. It can get you uh, out of it. You can possibly fight the grip from here and work your way back up. But here, he might still follow you as well. So he might kind of roll back to mount position here and now you're in trouble. So the more powerful way to do this is to block the hips as you go forward and instead of going to your back, do what we call a wrestler's bridge in order to keep the pressure on his body and uh, block the hips at the same time. So I buy myself a little bit of time, I'm tripoding, I'm gonna, with this hand, block his hips over here and escape his modified guard, roll forward here. So go inverted and shoot my feet forward like this, keep on blocking the hips like, the, like this. So I have shoulder pressure on him right now, and it's hard for him to follow. Try to follow me to mount, very hard, because my feet are blocking him and my hands are blocking his hips. From there, I could just walk around to side control position, and that's how I secure the side control, and I have a counter that's available. Once again, a little bit faster, so overshoot or wrestler's bridge, so tripoding, controlling the arm, lightening the choke, controlling the hips, getting free, shooting, inverting, shooting the feet, Away, bridging, controlling the hips, and then walking all the way around to side control position. Now if you're new to this, I recommend you practice this move on your own, uh, the overshoot or wrestler's bridge, a very powerful move. So you can do it on your head or on your shoulder. For beginners, I recommend on the shoulder, it puts less stress on the neck. It's very simple, so it requires some practice, but you can get it with time. So you're gonna put one shoulder from the kneeling position here, put one shoulder on the mat, 
You go upside down and find your stability here upside down when you're on your shoulders. So you can use both hands to stabilize. And then you shoot the feet through and you bridge. So you want to land on your tippy toes to keep your hips elevated. And then you walk back around to your turtle position or kneeling and or to side control uh, if what the case may be. And you can practice that on both sides. So opposite shoulder here on the mat, stabilize with the hands, invert, shoot the feet forward, keep the hips elevated and walk back that same direction, keeping stay on the toes and the shoulder only in order to come back. So you keep the pressure on the shoulder. Another great drill to do to practice your overshoot is to use a pad or a strike shield like this. It could also be a tie pad or a pillow or anything. So you're gonna put it on your shoulder and that kind of uh, prepares you to practice the takedown at the same time. So smash with your shoulder, boom, elevate the hips, shoot the feet forward, land on the tippy toes, keep the shoulder pressure, and then walk around to side control position. Once again on the other side, so shoulder here, boom on the ground, elevate, shoot the feet forward, land on the tippy toes, walk around, to side control position. Now, however you get to side control, if the person doesn't let go of your head at this point, you wanna keep his arm there. He, if he knows what he's doing, he needs to let go. So if you get to this position, you wanna grab the wrist and you wanna keep the arm nice and deep over here. And this gives you the opportunity to do the Von Flu counter choke. So it's gonna go like this. I wanna get this arm here nice and deep in his neck. I wanna keep this locked over here with my wrist first and then go Block it with my shoulder, so try to pull your arm out. Should be hard, I'm locking it with my neck and my shoulder, nice and tight. From here I wanna do an S grip with my fingers first, or go straight to the gable grip if I can. And then what I wanna do, is I wanna go on my tippy toes in the back, blocking his hips over here. I wanna crush with my shoulder, so my left shoulder in this case, is digging into his neck. I'm gonna make a strong neck at the same time, putting shoulder, his shoulder is gonna go in this opposite carotid artery, and I wanna twist my body this way, squeeze my grip, strong neck, until I get the tap. So once again, I've just landed past the guard, I wanna secure his arm in place over here, nice and deep, lock it in with my forearm, S grip, gable grip, elevate on the toes, block the hips, shoulder pressure, neck pressure, and drive to get the choke, Von Flew counter choke. So what he wants to do in this case, of course he wants to finish the guillotine choke, but if ever the guy gets past your guard and you still have the head grip, you want to let go of this and frame as quickly as possible. So if he has this over here, he has a good head grip, but I managed to get past his leg over here, right away he lets go and he frames, right? So I might still be on top, but now he's not in danger of the Von Flew counter choke. Let's look at it uh, from standing. So I go in for the double leg, he has the head grip, but as soon as I pass the guard, he lets go. So I go in here, I, he has the head grip, but if I manage to finish double leg, he knows I'm passing guard, he's gonna let go and frame on my neck, and then I'm on top, but at least he's safe from the counter choke. And your last layer of defense is survival. So many times when a person has control on you in any different type of submission hold, they might not be able to finish yet, but you might not be able to escape either or counter. So then you might just wanna bide yourself some time in order to survive and eventually be able to escape or counter. So let's say from standing over here, he has my posture broken. I can't take him down, he has a good base. I wanna survive, so I wanna grip fight. I wanna get this hand here inside to lighten the load here on my neck. I wanna keep on working to make make a strong neck at the same time, and possibly try to uh, get my other arm in at the same time as well, try to break his grip, eventually be able to slip out or do any one of the takedowns and guard passes that we saw. Same thing is true in any type of uh, guard situation, in this case modified guard, so I'm tripoding, putting a lot of pressure with my shoulder on his solar plexus, and again, I wanna be working to dig my arms in to lighten the pressure on my neck, and then eventually work. I know that if I'm gonna roll, he's gonna follow me, I know that I can pass because his leg is nice and high on my back, so I just wanna bind myself some time, and eventually I'm gonna be working the grip to eventually maybe slip my head out however I can, or pass a guard, do any one of the counters, but you have to be able to survive sometimes for a little bit of time. Last situation is the mount, and honestly, the further you get uh, in this submission, the harder it is to escape, and this is the worst position to be in, so your chances aren't very good, but still, you gotta do something, so again, this hand is gonna be digging in, trying to lighten the pressure on your neck. Your other hand here is gonna be trying to get inside the elbow over here to break the grip, ideally, or at least uh, loosen his grip, and from there, you're gonna try to make a strong neck, try to slip away, and then as soon as you feel uh, a little bit of control on the choke, at this point, he doesn't wanna squeeze. We saw this in the uh, 
uh, guillotine uh, choke video, he's going to want to pummel his hands to reset his grip. So go ahead and reset your grip. Yeah, there's going to be some grip fighting going on. So he's trying to reset and get inside this hand as well. So let go of this, get inside this hand. Yeah, here, so I'm going to kind of get rid of my fingers. I got to get him back in. And when he gets a good uh, choke on me, he's breaking my posture, he has a head in, he might be able to get it really quick. So I finish, yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll, I might need to tap. So there's a time when you need to tap, but you definitely want to survive as long as you can. So getting that arm in. And as soon as you have a good control on the, the hands and you're safe from the choke, then it's time to think about escaping the position. So you might want to bridge. And the good thing is his base is compromised since he's committing his hands to your neck. So it's going to be easier to reverse the position. You can block a leg here, or you could just elevate the hips and eventually get back on top. And that's going to be hard for him to finish uh, if you get past his guard as you reverse the position. All right, so quick recap, the four layers of guillotine defense. First layer is prevention, and that's having a strong neck or good posture. So aligning basically your spine uh, in the same alignment as your opponents and uh, preventing from getting perpendicular where he can grab your head. So that's your prevention. Uh, early escapes, so you can either blast through the guillotine by doing a reactive uh, posture correction or strong neck, blasting through either to get to double or to get to the back, or you can slip away by doing grip fighting and pop your head out or use the angle uh, by grabbing the elbow over here and switching, turning around to pop your head free. We saw your main counter to the guillotine choke, your third layer of defense is to pass the guard. So when you're standing, you can do it with a double leg takedown, you could do it with a uh, outside trip with the mirror leg, you could do it with your hand as well, so walking around the guard as you take the guy down. He's gonna have to compromise his base because he's bringing his hips forward, so that makes it relatively easier to pass the guard and get him down. You can also do it from any type of guard situation. If the guard isn't locked high on your back, you can possibly hop past the guard as he's wrapping up the neck, so you land in side control. If the guard is locked, you can possibly get rid of it by shaking, getting rid of the guard and going to side control. Uh, if he's uh, really tight and the leg is on top, uh, possibly in a modified or half guard situation, you could uh, roll forward and uh, very important in this case to block the hips as you do it. And the superior way to do it is to use the wrestler's bridge or overshoot where you keep your hips elevated and you keep blocking their hips so you can then walk around to side control position. And in all of these cases, once you've successfully passed the guard and landed in side control position, if the person doesn't let go of your head, you can keep their arm there and execute the Von Flu choke as a counter. So knowing this, when you are attempting a guillotine choke and the person succeeds in countering you by passing your guard, you immediately want to let go and frame on their neck so that you're not exposed to this counter. And lastly, when all else fails, you need to be able to survive long enough. So your fourth layer of defense is survival. So digging your fingers in to lighten the pressure on your neck, trying still always to make a strong neck to relieve the pressure uh, and uh, buying yourself some time until you can either escape or get past the guard uh, to counter the guillotine choke. And that's it guys, so uh, I recommend you practice these techniques uh, well, practice a lot. Come back to this video regularly. If you click the like button below, this video will appear in your liked video. It's gonna be easy to find it uh, afterwards so you can review. I recommend you take notes from it as well, so uh, write down the different steps so you can have a kind of a, a cheat sheet when you're practicing with a partner. And uh, very important as well, when you start, uh, ask your partner to apply light resistance, so he's applying the choke somewhat uh, realistically. But as you get better and more used to these countering and escaping techniques, ask your partner to be more real uh, in his guillotine so that you get the feeling of what it is to practice against a, a, live, a live situation. Uh, and then progressively you get to free sparring situation where the guy's actually trying to choke you. In that case, don't be afraid to tap, okay? There's a time when you need to tap. Uh, if the guy has you, he's got your posture broken, he's sinking deep on the neck and you feel a little bit lightheaded and you're about to pass out, go ahead and tap, there's no shame in that. And especially if you feel a little bit of a neck crank at, this, at the same time as the guillotine, don't play around with that. Tap early, that way you're gonna maintain your joints uh, healthy uh, for a long uh, martial arts uh, training career, hopefully. So again, if you've enjoyed this video, click the like button uh, right now. Please uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions, any suggestions, uh, or any ideas for techniques that perhaps we did not cover in this lesson. Uh, we'll be happy to uh, share experiences in the comments and help other people learn at the same time as well. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, I recommend you do so right now because we've got tons of quality uh, martial arts tutorial videos coming up in every range of fighting, striking, grappling, and wrestling. So, till next time, I'm Patrick Fulop. And I'm Jacob Yap. This is Effective Martial Arts. Remember, practice well, safety first, and use these techniques only for self-defense.